So I want to talk about Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian again. I know, another banger of a video before the next anime season begins. But I wanted to talk about something that there are a couple of layers to problems from a perspective of anime, light novel, etc. And some things that I've spoken about recently, but some new things that I wanted to talk about when it comes to relationships, love, and also a thing that I like to call the ivory tower issue. Some people might know what I mean by that, I've used the term before on the, t on the channel, where consumers have this ivory tower issue where they look down on a story. Like, again, it's an ivory tower. They're far up into the sky, they're looking down on a story, and they're going, well, I would have done this, and oh, well, I would have done that, and oh, I would have done this. Because they can see everything going on. They can see how all the characters think, what all the characters are doing, and then they go, oh, but I would have done that instead of this. And it's like, well, no. Because if you're in their position, if you can put yourself in that character's position, would you have really done that? Not necessarily. The issue is, is a lot of people read or watch a series and they and they have this idea of, well, no, they should have done that because of all these other factors. But it's like, yes, but the characters don't know about those things or those factors. And that's one of the things that annoys me about AniTubers that use that mindset of, oh, well, this story should have been like that because of this. And it's like, well, no, because character A doesn't know about character B stuff. So no, they can't make a decision on that because they don't know that. And that's why I call it the ivory tower. It happens a lot, especially in romance animes, because in romance, as I like to say, love is a drug and it makes us do stupid things. And what I mean by that is one of the takes that I've seen recently is that Alia is an idiot. And also she's apparently the B word, but more so that she's an idiot because she speaks in Russian when she's trying to encrypt her words and that she doesn't want him to know about it. Well, I've got some breaking news for you. She does actually want him to know. See, the thing about humans in itself is that we are stupid by nature. We do things and we convince ourselves that we want to do it for a reason, but deep down inside in our subconscious, we actually do it for a different reason. And this is one of those situations. She is saying it in Russian, thinking in, in, from a perspective, a simple one layer of, oh, I'm just going to flirt with him and he's not going to know, but I don't want him to know what I'm really saying. No, what she's doing and what she's deeply thinking inside of her heart is, I'm going to flirt in Russian and I'm going to hope one day he twigs to what I'm actually saying and what I'm actually feeling. So he'll actually make the first move and actually reciprocate it. That's called flirting. I know. What an amazing concept. We just learned how flirting functions. And I know some of you are going to sit there and say, well, why are you making it sound so patronized? Because so many AniTubers and so many anime fans, big and small, do not have any experience with this. <laughs> and I shouldn't be shocked because we are talking about the anime community. A bunch of individuals like myself that live inside and watch anime. But here's the thing. I've been around the block for a while. I might sound young and springer, but I, I have got a couple of miles on this lovely body of it. I'm 34. I've definitely made some cringy mistakes as far as flirting goes. I've definitely said some stupid stuff that I've got stories for days. But I remember having a conversation with two of my mates, and I was giving some relationship advice to one of them. And he said to me, why should I listen to you? when you're not currently in a relationship, and that was back then. And my other friend said, you should listen to him because he's the one that's <laughs> not in a relationship so he knows what he's done wrong to be in that position. And that's the thing, you know, we learn from our mistakes. Well, I hope most of us do. There's a saying there. It's making a mistake is not an issue, not learning from it is the biggest issue. And so many times like this, if you say stupid cringy stuff or you flirt badly or, you know, you, you just make mistakes, honest mistakes that aren't truly harmful, then yeah, it's all it's all going to happen in experience and you just need to learn from them. And in, in these situations in romance animes, it's one of the things that I love about romance animes is you get to see the human element in characters where they misjudge situations, they say stupid stuff, they cringe stuff, and a good writer knows how to put those human elements into it. Because one of the biggest issues that many writers have is they do make the characters act as if like they're in an ivory tower where they know stuff that they shouldn't know about the other characters and then it just feels weird and janky. 
and then the writer has to make it make sense and it just feels very artificial and fake and so yeah writers need to really be skillful in making sure characters feel realistic because again like i said we're idiots when it comes to love love is not some simple one-dimensional easy thing it is a complex overly complex system that is constantly changing and evolving how we play the game between each other when it comes to pursuing each other in relationships it's just not that simple and so using this mindset that alia is an idiot because oh she should have foreseen that he might learn you know russian at some point and it's like that's the point we convince ourselves that we're doing it just to flirt but we don't really want them to know but deep down inside what we actually really want and in this case as i see it is that she does want him to work it out at some point it's very obvious that she deep down does want him to work it out at some point how do i know that well <laughs> she flirts outside of russian as well that's why she's just been a little bit more dare devilish rivet hoping again that he'll slowly get the clue but she's also in denial because she's a little bit too prideful and that's the thing even her own sister says that she's very prideful that she's in denial even her sister knows she's in love and this whole idea that he's also manipulating her it's not his fault that she's trying to speak well she's speaking in russian and she doesn't realize he actually knows it now of course <laughs> Her sister could maybe tell her, but I think her sister's just enjoying the show. And so that's another thing as well. Now, when you look at the overall character growth and development as the season goes on, the 12 episodes, I definitely do think their chemistry becomes a little bit more flirtatious, a little bit more publicly flirtatious. The, the, the hiding her feelings in Russian is slowly going to become less and less and less as she's becoming more forward with her feelings so i guess the gimmick in itself will slowly evaporate and that's not a problem but i do think a lot more of her deeper feelings will come forward because as time goes on she'll want to push those forward and say them in russian hoping that at some point he will catch on and actually learn a little bit of russian on the side and will maybe use some of those things and learn it now of course that's what she thinks but what he, he can speak it. That's why you've got to understand that she doesn't know that he does. And I know that sounds stupid, but trust me, there are a lot of anime and light novel, even light novel, but a lot of anime only fans that don't understand that. Now, as I said before, I've definitely seen their relationship grow and evolve throughout this season, and even in the light novels, it continues to do so. But I do feel like some anime fans did want a lot more going on there some major more confession but this is the thing and i said this in the last video if this covered four volumes instead of three volumes the reviews would have been far different from an anime's only perspective because what happens at the end of volume four would have made people go oh this would have been such a great like a great ending oh my god blah 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 but because of where it ended a lot of people felt like it wasn't satisfying enough and i think that's the issue i think you know, a, a lot of anime-only fans are not going to admit this, but they wanted a faster pace. And I get that. I get that. Sometimes light novel to anime doesn't always work perfectly to the way many people want it to be consumed. And this is why there's always this devil's advocate. Dumb Archie is a great example of this, of when a series goes too fast, or goes faster. I wouldn't say too fast, to be honest. I retract that. If it goes faster, but too fast to the light novels fan... The anime fans go, oh, this is great. The first couple of seasons of Darmanchi, many anime-only fans absolutely love it for its pacing, but the light novel fans absolutely despise it because they say it's too fast. Then, in the recent episode, not the current one coming up, but in the last season, season four, I believe, anime fans, anime-only fans, complained that the pacing was too slow, but the light novel fans loved it because it actually followed the light novel bit by bit by bit by bit and that's the thing that i think people don't quite understand is that anime and light novel are two very different types of mediums and how we consume them are very different because a light novel is it can be between four to six episodes of an anime and you can consume it all in one go 
while in an anime you're watching an episode week by week by week by week and you're getting episodic reviews from content creators that are having to break down what would be potentially one or two chapters maybe more or less and they're having to dissect those specific parts into these long-winded 20 30 minute long videos to pad it out for ad revenue and so that's why a lot of content creators need major things to happen and that's why they like a faster paced series because oh well if you can jam four to six chapters in there well now we can go over a lot more crazier things oh what alia got pregnant oh yuki got pregnant whoa masha got pregnant too he's banging them all Woo! let's make a 10 minute video just talking about that and another 10 minute going over how he's going to go to jail that's the thing and now i'm making all that up because it doesn't happen that's why i'm just giving an example of what craziness needs to happen in an anime for content creators to be happy and this is the thing that i've been talking about in the last video that i wanted to talk about more anime in itself has not changed it's how we've consumed it has changed and because of how we've consumed it it's pushed this idea that we need faster pace more stuff and i'm sorry i know this triggers people short attention spam it is an issue i'm sorry it is an issue and it's not me that's saying it it's actual documentations from actual people that do proper research on human behavior and i'm more than happy to talk to a psychologist any tuber named Ed or psychologist about this if he would love to I'd have to DM him about it about this very issue and we are going to be collaborating about ReZeros soon so I could bring that up and talk about this as an issue of short attention span and how the mindset of how we consume content and it's not everyone again not saying everyone but how we consume anime has become a lot more fast paced fast moments constantness and I think that's also because a lot of new anime fans that are coming in are much more younger and they've been brought up with a new generation of social media apps like TikTok, like YouTube Shorts, like Vines, Instagram, etc. They've been being sort of molded with this idea that they need everything in 60, 30 to 60 second shorts jammed all together. I mean, look at all these videos that go out there that are like these summary videos in like 60 seconds. Like they'll break down like four seasons of an anime in like 60 seconds. And then people go, oh yes, I know everything about the anime because I read the 60, watched the 60 second video. It's like, huh? And I mean, even then, uh, you could watch a 10 minute long video of an entire s season of an anime. And even then, you're not going to get the full context. That's why I prefer to do analytical content where it's a little bit longer, a little bit more deeper. And it's not about summarizing things. It's about adding to the conversation of what the medium is about, what the show or the light novel or the manga is about. Because then I hope that you yourself would go watch or read it and then come to my video for that additional content and value that I add to the show, rather than coming to me as the only way of consuming the anime. Because that has become a problem. People are consuming anime through content creators rather than actually watching the show or reading it. That is a very scary notion. And if you don't believe me, I've got some bad news for you. Because I've been sharing some juicy comments that I see daily on my social media on X slash Twitter where people openly admit that they're either watching shows two, three to five times speed. There are content creators that have openly admitted that they're watching shows at five times speed at points and even two and that some only watch shows through clips. That leads to a lot of context being removed. Now again, if you just don't like the show because you don't like the characters in general, that's fine. It's not for everyone. Not show, not every show is for everyone. But when I see these kinds of comments where people say things that just aren't quite true, and again, I've seen some comments being like, oh, well, Alia and his development isn't there. And it's like, well, yeah, there is development. It's just not as fast paced as you would like. And that's the thing. I think the problem isn't the people's opinions, it's how they're framing it. Because I think they're trying to make this more heavy, concrete, slam dunk, oh, my opinion is a state of fact, it's, it's groundbreaking, but rather than just saying, hey, 
I don't like the chemistry between the characters. I don't like how they meld together. I don't like Ali as a character. I just don't like that Sundere kind of prickly feeling. It's just not for me. I'm going to go watch a series where the character's a little bit more fluffy, easier to kind of digest. And it's like, okay, that's cool. There's many of those out there. Heaps of those. Not every romance series is going to be your cup of tea. Some characters just don't really meld well. I mean, you look at something like Mashuku Tensei. Rudy is not an easy character to digest as a form of consuming. There are many moments where you sit there and you cringe and you go, Oh boy, you are one stupid boy. And that's the point. But some people can't consume that because they just can't handle that. And that's fine. It's the same situation here. Not every character you're going to want to digest. But rather than just saying, hey, it's not my cup of tea, those are the reasons, they go, oh, well, actually, there was no development in this series, and he has no backstory, and she has no backstory. Oh, wait, actually, she does, but no, she doesn't, actually, because I just don't like, and it's like, okay, pull back, Turbo. Now you're, now you're just deliberately being malicious there and saying, oh, well, there isn't any. It's There is. You just don't like the direction it's going, and that is fine. But don't twist words into some state of fact of there is nothing there when there is something there. That's one of the issues that I've seen on different social media platforms. That's just how I perceive it. I know some people are going to get upset at me, but hey, it's just my humble opinion. Overall, I think at this point, if most people don't like season one of the anime, I generally tell people just to don't bother watching the next season because clearly you're probably not going to like the chemistry between the characters. But at the same time, yeah, the next volume coming up is going to have some pretty juicy things going on in Season 2. There is development. It's just one of those where I feel like, like I said, if it was four volumes instead of three volumes in this season, trust me, I guarantee you people would have very differently responded. I've also seen some comments from people saying that there was so much cut from the anime, from the light novel. No, like little scenes, I'd say three to five seconds, maybe ten second scenes. Ten seconds would be even overblowing it. A lot of the stuff that was skipped was very minor. It would not change the opinions of anime only fans that don't like it. I mean, yeah, there's some cute moments, there's the dance scene, but the dance scene was kind of done in a way that it was kind of like led to your own imagination. It never really explicitly stated how they danced or anything. It's just one of those that like, oh yes, we went for a dance. And then you kind of filled in the gap yourself in your head. And that's the thing about light novels and animes. They're very different forms of consumption. And I think sometimes people try to make them feel like they're both consumed in the same way. One, you read them, one, you watch them very different one you use your own imagination to fill in those scenes the other one they're showing you visually what those scenes are so i think sometimes people forget that consumption again i'm getting into a big ramble i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below this might be the last video on it you never know well on the anime itself but I will definitely be reading volume 6 when it comes out and talking about it as well because Honestly, from a light novel's perspective, the story does really get quite interesting in some of the chemistry between the characters and the depth itself. I'm not going to spoil things, I'm just saying that I do feel like you grow to understand his perspective of what he sees in himself and also what she sees in him and how she sees herself and then also her sister and the, her relationship with both of them and then also the relationship between him and his own sister and his own family and where there's a lot of politics involved and the chaotic nature of it all. It's like a dance between the family drama and his school life and his romance life and it's all just kind of colliding like planets and just waiting for a big blow. That's what I like about it. Whether that gets more delved into as the volumes go on, I'll just have to wait and see. But I don't like reading things online and just blindly believing what some anime fans or li well, some light novel fan says. Because a lot of the times when I see that, everyone's got biases, including myself. So it's fine to look at it and, consume and read it and go, oh, that's their opinion. But I like to also consume it to get my own opinion on it. And that's what I mean when I said before, because I know someone's going to say, well, what, why do you make your own videos? My videos are not there to tell you what to think. They're there to make you think. Understand the difference. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm making you think about 
what the story involves in the assumption that you also consume it as well. So again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Stay tuned for more juicy analysis content on the channel. So if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and up to you beautiful nerds in the next video.